Good morning, guys. Good morning, guys. So what's been going on in Ukraine over the last of couple days? Well, you can be sure Russia has committed more war crimes and continues to deny them. But we will get those uh, in a second. However, in a surprising turn of events, Amnesty International has attacked Ukraine soldiers and has blamed them for Ukraine's civilian casualties. Obviously, this is nonsense and we will get there into a second. For those who don't know me, my name is Maria and I make videos on Ukrainian culture, history, politics and give updates on Russia's war in Ukraine. Please hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you know when I release my next videos. Amnesty International has reported that Ukrainian soldiers are to blame for Russia attacking civilian targets, as they are using these as their headquarters and operational bases. The report is literally titled Ukrainian Fighting Tactic Endanger Civilians. As someone who cares deeply about human rights issues, I have been a huge fan of what Amnesty International does, but this is unacceptable. Ukrainian fighting tactics are not endangering civilians. Russian bombs and missiles are endangering civilians. This is not a balanced war. One side, Russia is hungry for war, and the other side, Ukraine is hungry for peace, freedom and security. Interestingly, it appears that Amnesty International did not speak to Amnesty Ukraine and in fact did not even allow them to edit the report. Amnesty Ukraine has blasted the report, saying they were not given access to it or in fact consulted about it. The report was written by people not on the ground and Amnesty Ukraine could easily have corrected it for them, but they were never given that opportunity. Of course, Russia and Russian trolls have already started using it and promoting it. What's happened to you, Amnesty? You are being used by Russians and Russians' propaganda to justify the massacre of civilians, which you have blamed Ukraine for? Now, Russians will target civilians aggressively claiming that it's actually Ukrainian military targets. Just like they did in Mariupol, at the theater, at Vinica, at the mall, at Kramatorsk, at the railway station. It is upsetting to say the least. What do you think, guys? Do you think Amnesty Report is justified? Please let me know in the comments below. Moving on. According to the Secretary General of the UN, Antonio Guterres, the UN has launched a mission to establish the facts of the tragedy in the Olenivka prison camp, where 53 Ukrainian prisoners of war were brutally murdered. The Associated Press has said that. Russia seeks to fabricate evidence of their strike to blame Ukraine. And of course, we can all see this is exactly what Russia will do. U.S. intelligence believes that Russia will plant false evidence to blame Ukrainians for the terrorist attacks in Alenivka. The official, who spoke anonymously, said that Russians may even leave HIMARS ammunition as evidence, as sooner or later independent journalists and experts will gain access to the prison camp. Of course, even though Russia says it wants an investigation, so far they have not allowed anyone to go and investigate. No doubt that Russians will use the amnesty report to justify this massacre as well. Moving on, in an interview, the deputy head of the president's office has said that Ukraine will return the occupied territories before referendums are held there. He went on to say that Russia planned for a referendum on 11th of September, as it coincides with voting in Russia. Hmm. 
clothing in Russia. That's a good joke. I will tweet about it and you guys will laugh. <laughs> clothing in Russia. <sighs> hmm. Then there were reports that perhaps these pseudo-referendums would not take place in September, but later. Mr. Zhokwa went on to say that these referendums won't happen because Ukraine will retake these territories from the Russian terrorists well before then. And you know what? I believe him. There is a lot going on in the South that is not visible to us yet. But progress is being made in liberating Ukrainian territory from the Russian occupiers. In his opinion, Russia's constant statements about referendums are aimed at the Russian audience and indicate Moscow is uncertain about the ability to keep the occupied territories. In other news, a Georgian bar has introduced entry visas for Russian. To obtain the visa required to visit a Dedayena bar, you need to fill out a document that requires you to agree that Crimea is Ukraine and Abkhazia and Tsikhin Valley regions are Georgia. Of course, supporters of Russia's war against Ukraine are not allowed into the bar. For those who are not aware, in 2008, Putin and Russia annexed parts of Georgia, and many Georgians remember this. In the bar itself, it is forbidden to speak Russian with the staff and engage in political discussions. Okay guys, that's it for today. Uh, thank you for watching me. Please remember to hit subscribe and see you in my next videos. Slava Ukraini!